it, it's still something I'm looking forward to. It, it's still a game that in my head, I feel like this game is going to be a highly competitive game. It's going to be massively entertaining for, you know, obviously Oregon USC fans, but just fans of college football in general, you're going to see some offense being played for sure. Um, you know, I, I think we're in for the over. I don't even know what Vegas has us sitting at right now, but I think three and a half. Yeah. We're, we're watching the over. I don't care what it is. I'm taking the over in this game. Um, <laughs> So I, I'm excited for it. You know, it's uh, I understand some of the luster is gone. You know, it looks a little better on paper if we're talking about a, a six, eight matchup or a top five match, you know, or whatever the case is. But it's like when we're strictly speaking about the products that are on the field displaying themselves that, you know, heading into April's NFL draft, it's like we're in for an exciting game. And I don't think, you know, although the rankings don't reflect what we thought it was going to at this point, I don't think it takes anything away from the competitiveness of the game that we're about to see. Well, and that's something I wanted to get into is kind of like, what are the keys of the game here? Because, uh, Rick, plug your ears. The line has gotten worse. It was 14 and a half. Now it's 16 and a half. Oh, geez. For Oregon. Um, yeah. And as I saw in multiple podcasts earlier, everyone just said, it's going to be a bloodbath. Oregon literally might murder us. And even like you just said, Landing might decide to run, try to run up the score. I, I do see the first half being pretty close. It's going to be back and forth, kind of like Washington USC was. It's going to be back and forth, back and forth, and then it comes down to adjustments at halftime. Um, but what, what for you, especially for the Trojans, defensively or offensively, what is what would you say are like say three keys to the game to keep Oregon off, you know, off balance? Well. These are keys. I don't know if they're attainable. But you no, gotta stop. Uh, yeah, that, that, those are two different things. Yes. I know. <laughs> you got to stop the run. You got to stop the run. And you got to try to make uh, Oregon one dimensional, which I don't know if you can, but um, you, you at least got to try to make an effort, improve your tackling. Let's put it that way. You have to show pride. Okay. Forget the scheme. You, you know what? You guys are three, four, five stars. You came here, you came to USC for a reason. This is the game, all right? You were recruited by Oregon. And there's players that were recruited by USC that are at Oregon. This is a huge game. So play like it. Have some pride. You knock off Oregon, yeah. You know, we have an outside shot to make the Pac-12 championship game. I'm not going to speak that nonsense. I'm not. That's, <laughs> that's one. Uh, number two, we have to get – Zach Branch has to return – a punt or kickoff return for a touchdown, and we have to win the t turnover battle. That's Those are the three things. Can we get three of them? I don't know. Can we get one? Maybe. Can we get two out of three? I don't know. Here's the other thing that we haven't brought up, but I know it's in Dan Lanning's playbook. This is a heavyweight fight. You get Bo Nix you know, to destroy USC – that's going to help him the Heisman. And guess what? Then he gets to go against Penix, probably in the Pac-12 championship game. And he will be the favorite to win the Heisman Trophy. So that's another thing that that uh, Oregon has going for him and uh, Dan Lanning. So there's a lot of incentives. And that's what we used to have in the craft beer business. Incentives. Right? <laughs> you, go, you go hit certain accounts and you nail them, you bag them. Same thing here with Oregon. You check off these boxes, you beat USC by 20 points, you hang a 70, and Bo Nix shows out. Guess what? That might get you into the top four. And Dan Lanning will be like, hey, you know what? How can you not put us in there? It's not like we're a holding call away like Lincoln Riley. No, you puff out your chest. This is what we did. This was our goal. We accomplished them. How can you not put us in the top four? There you go. Dan Lanning, he's a hype man. At LBC Trojan, have him call me up. <laughs> have him send me a tweet. Send me a tweet. Yeah, we're, well, see, Dan Lanning has another famous statement. It's called, uh, we're not here for clicks. We're here for... for <laughs> there you go. There you go. It will be, for it, we're fighting for wins. <laughs> it will, it yeah. will be something, and I'm jumping the gun here. I, I just brought the thought of those. It will be something, if you look back at the end of this year, just say Oregon somehow won the national championship or something this year. Could you imagine the film that would be put out of his pregame speeches? 
and halftime speeches. It great. would just be a monologue of like his speeches during the year. It'd be amazing. Now I, that's jumping the gun. Like, so we got to take care of business. But uh, Derek, what, what do you think? think? What do you think? What do you think for Oregon? The keys, the keys to this yeah. game are because what do you guys think about the keys to Oregon. Yeah, it's like it, there's a lot. There's a lot. USC is going to put a points. So I think we're all in agreement with that. So yeah, put up points. Yeah, I, I have one on both sides of the ball. I think if Oregon's able to do these two things, I'm about to talk about. Things are going to go well uh, for him, and it starts with the defense. It starts with the pass rush and containment. I think, you know, we do expect this defensive line to be able to get to the quarterback. It's we need to make sure we're able to contain that. So, the you know, these these plays that are three to six seconds don't turn into plays that are seven to ten seconds. And, you know, all of a sudden our DBs are trying to trail these, you know, highly explosive wide receivers for – six seconds playing backyard football with a Heisman caliber quarterback behind the line. I, I don't want that. Um, so I think if they're able to, you know, make Caleb uncomfortable, make him make these decisions early, um, you know, wh when he is scrambling, make sure that they're able to contain him, hold their assignments. I think there, you know, if they, if they're able to do that, we know USC is going to score, but I think that takes away some of the electricity of the game. Um, some of the stuff that could hurt you. And then flipping to the offensive side of the ball, it actually kind of goes back into what Rick was talking about with one of USC's defensive keys is Oregon needs to limit their turnovers. So this is not something that has been a problem this year. I think we're sitting at four turnovers this year up to this point. Um, not something I'm concerned about on a week to week basis. But what I am saying is you can't get complacent in these settings. You know, obviously Bo Nix comes out and he throws three interceptions. And like you said, Zachariah Branch takes off a punt return for a touchdown at some point in this game. All of a sudden we're looking at a, uh, the score going into the fourth quarter going, what the hell's happening right now? We, you know, we've seen it time and again, we've seen it year after year happen. Um, it's just, I don't think Dan Lanning's going to, yeah, I get it, Spaz, I hear you. I don't think Dan Lanning's the type of dude that's going to let that kind of manifest itself as the game goes on. Um, you know, we've seen through these cinematic recaps and such that they are very on top of these in-game adjustments and they're not afraid to vocalize that. It's just, they need to make sure that they're holding onto the ball, not turning it over. So what I think we are going to see is we're going to see him score. We're going to see Bucky run the ball. We're going to see Jordan James run the ball, and we're going to see Bo Nix throw the ball. It's going to happen. It's just – it's the same with USC. You know, um, they're able to spread the ball. They're, they're going to move it. It's just a matter of doing it consistently, not giving these free turnovers away. Um, you know, and in reality, just the way the season's kind of played out for these two teams, I think if Oregon's able to do those two things on the offensive and defensive side of the ball, they're going to be okay. Um, I'm not going to come out and say it's going to be a 28 point win or anything. You know, I, when it all comes down to it, I feel like this will probably be about a 10 point game at the end of it. It's just, you can't do things to give them an additional opportunity when you have that, you know, highly skilled players on the other side of the ball and Caleb Williams in that wide receiving core and Marshall and Lloyd. I'm not sure if he's healthy again, but they have some real ballers on that offensive side of the ball. And it's like, you know, when, when you're giving them the ball over and over, you, you are just daring them to come down and score. And that's not what I want to see on the Oregon side of things. Yeah. Exactly what Derek was saying. You know, it's like, we just got to come out and, and, and play Oregon ball offensively. We, we got to control the, line of scrimmage and, and run the ball um you, you you don't have to go out and run for uh 256 yards and in a half like washington did but if you can get 100 150 yards in the first half on the ground and, and control the ball through the air and uh keep the ball away from caleb as much as possible it, it definitely increases your art, odds because they're going to score. Uh, you you give Caleb Williams the ball, and he he's proven, you know, time and time again for the last two years that, you know, if you give me the ball, uh, I'm going to make something happen. Um, he's had one bad game in 17 games, really, and that was the first half of – the Notre Dame game. And, uh, outside of that, the the guy has has completely balled out for USC for the last two years, and, and he 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 knows how to win games. Unfortunately, this year his defense has lost him games, and and I think that's why you saw 
uh, what you saw at the end of last week. Um, he he is an emotional kid that uh, cares about this game and, and loves playing football. It, that's what that showed me. You know, uh, he's got heart, and Bo Nix has heart, and he's trying to make up for a career. Here's a guy a year and a half ago when he came to Oregon what was told he was washed up. He had multiple nicknames. Uh, they called him Bo Picks, Bo Six, um, you know, everything. And in two years, he has gone from a joke in college football to now he's at least top three in the Heisman this year. And the latest projection I saw was him being put on uh, Mel Kuyper's board as the number six pick at this point in the draft, this upcoming NFL draft. Here's a guy two years ago that nobody said would ever get drafted in the NFL. I, I, I do have to I do have to correct you on one thing. One thing there, um, Spaz, aka Trojan wannabe. You don't think Bucky Irving and Jordan James are salivating looking at that that defense. I think Jordan J I think Bucky Irving wants to go for 300 yards. <laughs> no offense to, to Rick, but I think oh, they're like, yeah, take, bring it on. <laughs> that's it's exactly what you have to do. And and that's one of the points where you brought up the Notre Dame game. That's where Caleb had the, the worst game. And I think Oregon has the chance of duplicating a similar fashion. It's because Oregon has the number 10 run defense. You give up basically 90 yards a game. And if USC can't run the ball, then you make USC one-dimensional. You put all the pressure with, with Dorless and Jordan Birch and your defensive line on Caleb. And, if, if you know, you know he's passing because you, you've stopped the run. And so um, that's one of the ways to do it. I'm sure – Oregon's going to have a great plan. They're, they, they're looking at film. They see it. And it's not like – it's it's who you are. You're number 10 after, what, 10 games, nine games. Um, so you know how to stop the run. USC gives up close to 190 yards rushing a game. Eesh. I can't believe I just said that. I just puked in my mouth. Can, can, I didn't hear is. you. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear you clearly, Rick. Yeah, 190 <laughs> yards a game. That's after 10 games. That's ridiculous. Well, it, it probably helps Oregon's case that they also have the number one and three rusher in the country in terms of yards per carry, too. You know what I mean? So it, I, I see what you're saying. It's a recipe yeah. for disaster on the USC. Well, here's, the thing. here's the thing, is that USC is going to be forced to catch up, and we don't play very well from behind, and your defense can cause mistakes. I mean, against Notre Dame, there was a pick six. They ran back a, a, a kickoff for 99 yards. And if I'm Oregon, how do I defend Caleb Williams? Not with my DBs playing for six, eight to ten seconds. I let Bucky Irving and Jordan James run the hell out of the ball and run for long drives, right? And then you're going to wear out that defense, not only physically but mentally, emotionally. There'll be no more fight. Just wear them out and keep the ball away from Caleb Williams. That's what I would do. And then you mix in a little play action with Bo Nix to throw it over the top to Franklin and rip our hearts out. And Dan Lanning's capable of doing that. 